Universal Citizen Media, and this show is a special show. Now, about a year ago or so, Andrew and I did a prediction show, and the rest is history. Uh, most of the stuff came true, um, for those of you who were in the show. And so we're going to be doing another one of these shows today. Why are we doing this stuff? Uh, because if you guys um, are not attuned to what's happening, in your environment, if you are the frog that's boiling in the water, then this show is a show that will clarify things for you. Okay, this is what life looks like outside the pot. Okay, and so now <laughs> Andrew and I and Amir are going to be doing another prediction show. So on top of this, we want to do a um, call-in show for you guys, because I know some of you guys want to ask questions. And we're going to make this a two-part series. The first part will be the show. The second part, we will um, be opening the forum for you guys to interact live and direct with us. So if you guys are interested in that, we will be putting out announcements to that effect. But before we get any further, Andrew, Amir, let yourselves be heard. <laughs> I sense future coming i believe in the future but understand these prediction shows you do not need to be psychic to know this part of the future you need to know your patterns your analytics your permutation analysis mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it trust in your gut now is there a psychic twinge here there me salt and pepper here tomato tomato but the last prediction show we did, I believe in the beginning of January, David, 99% of the shit came true. And the prediction show we did the, the time before that in June and July last year, same thing happened. Now, this is the biggest thing to understanding. The United States has a midterm election coming. And this midterm election is going to determine if the Democrats shoot themselves in the foot while simultaneously shooting themselves in the own ass. And the D Republicans who are do nothing because the Democrats try to pass all the bills that no one wants and the Republicans just say no to everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a big sweep of the Democrats unless they radically change their point of view, which they can't at this point in time. They are stuck into all of the facets that they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we're going to be doing is talking predictions. This last prediction show, David and I talked a lot about the stock. It would melt up and then it would melt down. It would melt up and it melt down. It has done that. It will continue to do that. With that said, you don't need to be psychic. Amir, I pass it to you for your opening predictive statement. Oh, well, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. Thank you so much for being with us. And Andrew and David, I thank you also. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> as Andrew really beautifully put, you don't require psychic skills uh, to see what's happening just a little bit further down the road. You see trends and patterns emerging, and the outcome becomes uh, predictable with a good degree of certainty. So again, we're going to look at what trends are existing right now, where we've come from, where we're at, and where is it that we're most likely going to end up? So it's going to be an interesting show, again, with the track record that these esteemed gentlemen have. It's going to be worth watching. So thank you for being here with us. You know, I don't know where to start. We could start with the theme, crypto has gone schizo. Uh, we could start with um, crazy is the new norm. Like uh, all of these are names of TV shows, but it's not fiction, it's reality. And so we are experiencing a dystopia. Um, yes. Isaac Asimov cannot write this kind of shit. He can. Yes. All the stuff we were afraid of in 2019, the worst part of it is that conspiracy theorists, theorists <laughs> ended up being correct or annoying as hell. And so we're here um, eating a little bit of crow because a lot of the stuff that they said um, would come true actually did come true mm -hmm. and so we're living in this kind of crazy crazy world and here's the thing there's still, still some people out there that think that they, things are normal oh boy we have a show for you where do you want to start andrew 
So when it comes to eating crow, you've got two choices. Eat the crow when it's young and tender or when it's old and hard. I ate my crow when it was young and tender, and I got him to spit. Yes, what timing I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Everyone, <laughs> that was a setup. Absolutely a setup. Listen, the conspiracy <laughs> theorists were right. All the stuff were right. And it's become it's becoming more and more evident. So I guess we should probably start with the whole um young and tender, the young and tender crow. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. So until a few days ago, David didn't know the crypto had melted down, you know, three quarters of its value. Three quarters of its value. You you understand that crypto has gone schizo. Yeah. Like, and I do mean stable crypto, huh? Yeah, like that stable coins, stable coin, Litecoin, Ethereum, all, 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 all of them are, are bending over and, and taking a bareback ride. <laughs> it, it just shows you there's no safe bet anymore. I think the this whole, was engineered though. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was, the whole, the whole yeah. mythology behind cryptocurrency and how it's so sophisticated, and how, and it's, how it's yeah, and how it's all self help and motivation, people which are just scam artists for the most of them. I honestly, it, it's really sad because a lot of people, crypto was a ray of hope in a darkened night for a lot of people. Right. And so a lot of people put their trust and hope in something better. Right. And they should know that systems of domination and control will never allow you to, uh, to leave their control and that is the way it is um amir you had made a point some time ago if you want to um be better you better start becoming self-reliant yes tangible Absolutely. commodities so tangible my, commodities yep so my, if you're, if you're in the stock market if you're in crypto if you've invested millions in the bank there's no guarantee so we were speaking earlier the three of us that there are periodic cycles where uh, the system of domination and control cuts the grass, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's culling the population out of its energy, mm -hmm. which is now represented in money, crypto, and different currencies. Mm -hmm. So right now, when there's still some time left, all the water hasn't been drained out of the barrel, there's still some left, it would be a good idea to invest in tangible commodities like a generator for your home, like solar panels, stuff like that, that is going to be incredibly expensive later down the line. So that's a prediction. Stuff that will help you be self-reliant and independent is going to be close to impossible to come by mm -hmm. intentionally. There's no change in supply and demand. It's going to be engineered to be scarce. Yeah, we're going well, to get it, it. Go ahead. It's, it's already engineered to be scarce through the supply chain issues that we've gone on so far. And I want to reiterate, once the supply chain issues have maximized their damage that they're going to do, because it hasn't even come near its maximizing the damage they're going to do, you're going to hear the term too big to fail come back. And this is my first prediction. And what will too big to fail be applied to industry first? Me, I'm guessing it's the pharmacies. So too big to fail is like saying somebody's too fat to die. Airlines. <laughs> It'll be the airlines first. And here's the thing about the airlines that I want to say. Hmm. Honestly speaking, um, a friend of mine just had, a, had an experience with a popular airline in Canada. Now I want to just walk you through this experience. You get on an airline, you've bought a ticket. The flight has been delayed one, two, three, four times. You get on a flight and you're in an airport where you're in, you're in transit. They tell you, well, guess what? I don't know if you guys know, but, um, this airline, 10% of its flight got canceled recently. There were people literally sleeping in an airport for hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But wait, there's more. You can't reach anybody in customer service at that airline. Right. You can't reach anybody in customer service. So you're in this airport, you're sleeping in the airport. They're telling you that all the hotels in the vicinity have been, uh, have been taken up. Mm -hmm. In the morning, they put you on a plane. They send you to your destination at some random time because they're trying to um, ease the backlog. You get to your destination and they lose your bag. But the airline doesn't have to deal with that, right? These are the kinds of things that are actually happening. So, Andrew, you're correct. There's no culpability on anyone. Okay. But, but David, it's really interesting you say this. What you just described is going on, has been going on in the third world, let's say Asia, Africa, forever. Correct, but, but it's reached the first the, world now. Huh? Yes, now the 15% now the world population which reside in North America and Europe are becoming third world. So welcome to the club, guys. <laughs> Uh, so let me let me let me tell you why. So in Biden's beginning of his first year, mm -hmm. he changed the laws and what it takes to become a professional airline pilot. It used to be about 650 hours of practice that allows you to become a third seater so you can begin earning hours. He's tripled it. You need now almost 2000 hours to get your license to become a, just a third seat trainer in a, pl in a plane. And what that means is the existing people have to practice for another two years. So, David, if you Google airline pilot shortage, mm -hmm. you're going to see a bunch of different articles there. And this is for anybody out there. This has been engineered, absolutely engineered. Now, for the last 70 years of flight, it has been the same rules for pilots flying. Okay. I got my private pilot's license, sorry, my practice trainer's pilot's license when I was 16, and I did about 250 hours. I haven't been able to do much since then, but my, those hours still count. What they're basically saying is these flight schools that have been around since the dawn of flight and the original rules are now virtually invalid. But Andrew, it's not just limited to airline pilots. <clears throat> truck drivers, the truck drivers, the same exactly. thing. Yes, like yes, the, yes, the no. rules for truck drivers is the exact same thing. They changed the rules for the truck drivers. Now, so there's a truck driver shortage of 250,000 drivers minute. There's going to be an airline pilot shortage of at least 30,000 between now and 2030. You see, and here's the thing. In the grand scheme of things, all of the shortages that we're seeing, shortage of services and stuff like that uh, that we're seeing, they want to blame it on rising gas prices, the war in Ukraine, and so on. It's just a That's false flag. And I'm like, right. my God, seriously, right. you are right. deliberately engineering suffering around the planet. And the thing about it is that people don't do that kind of in-depth analysis that we do. Or, or the, ones that, the, the, one, right. the ones that do do the in-depth analysis will never get mainstream media attention. They'll always be on the fringe, the fringes or extreme right-wingers, et cetera. Now, I gave you the prediction what's going to go out the airliners. The same thing will happen with truck drivers, but there's one more thing to understand. Pilots of boats. Cargo ships, exactly what cargo I was ship, Cargo ship captain laws have also changed, and the insurance rules for them has also changed. You're going to see a tremendous amount of captain layoffs and secondary layoffs from the cruise liners, because they're not going to have full boats anymore, which are going to try to take up uh, uh, oil tankers, this, that, whatsoever. And then you're going to see another shortage in captaincies, sea-based captaincies. So we need to do a little bit of um, dumbing it down here. Okay, so guys, the laws of economics works based on supply and demand. Okay, so there's a short ex economics class. If there is not enough supply, prices rise. Okay? Right. Artificially rise. And so when you create those kinds of shortages, you can actually charge people more money. Okay? 
Um, and which is which is what we're seeing in all of the shipping industries. Yep. A cargo container used to cost four or five thousand to go across the go across the water. Now it's about two hundred thousand to go across the water now. Correct. Correct. And it's not, it's not only um, tangible commodities, it's also services as well. And right. so the law of demand, there's a high demand, short supply, prices go up. Okay. Now, this is not only happening in one industry, it's happening across industries. It's like a formula that they have discovered. Yes. yes Find yes. the pretext, create a, so a shortage, and deprive people of much needed income. So I we did a show some time ago about the squeeze that people are under. This kind of squeeze where you can't live as you normally would have like years ago. And there are a lot of people who believe, well, you know, things will get better. We said to you, this is the second prediction. Mm -hmm. Things ain't getting better. Stop waiting, stop holding your breath. If you're holding your breath right now, release it. Don't turn blue. Right. The fact that all of our backgrounds are blue in it is yeah. And don't important. believe the main don't believe the mainstream industry news guy that tells you inflation is a good thing. Like who says these things? Like seriously, like the top notch and the, the top notch NBC reporters literally say it's good, just like they say you should eat bugs. Well, right. the genuine economists, professors, who know what the what the whole thing is, are pulling out their hair saying oh my god crazy is here this it's is a crazy. new paradigm they have discovered mm -hmm. a new and here's the here's the thing i am seeing a a, a sort of um uh coalescence between people making laws warping of the uh, the world of economics and the warping of politics these things are mm -hmm. coming together as a yes. unit right and so like in canada with that bill that has just passed yep, what they're trying to pass that bill c11 can you imagine that at this stage of the game you're still playing media games and the yep. formula is anybody who says anything is immediately labeled a nazi that works right Okay, that works. Well, I could not possibly be a Nazi and I will say shit. Okay, what is happening is that laws have been, there are laws that are becoming more and more like squeezed down, right? Mm -hmm. And so you had C-16, which um, infringed on, on the, free, uh, the, the rights of people in Canada um, in terms of being able to speak the free speech then you had that um act that was passed that was like the patriot patriot act in in the us right mm -hmm. except it had an economic twist so if you support people who resist then you are a collaborator and therefore your bank account shall be suspended or frozen mm -hmm. so david i have a little some funny thing to add to you there was a Fox News reporter who's a black man, highly educated, former prosecutor, who was on a round table with a group of, a group of other black activists. Mm -hmm. And they were talking Black Lives Matter, what it does, this, the thing. And the woman accused the black man, which he didn't realize that he wasn't black, of being a racist. And the guy's like, huh? I'm black. You realize that, right? I've done all the black services, marched to this and that, and for all the black rights. Just because I'm on Fox News, you think I'm a fucking racist? And this is happening left and right, where the extreme lefties go immediately to racist and Nazi because she tried to call him a racist Nazi. And just as you were pointing, I can't be it, this woman accused him of being a racist Nazi, full on black man on Fox News as his regular own spot and everything. Yeah, well, can you imagine if he came on with the tattoos and the double lightning strikes on his forehead or something? Yeah, exactly. This, this kind of nonsense has been going on. And this is a formula that they have gotten because um, the Prime Minister of Canada used it effectively against the truckers, right? Right. If you disagree with me, right, then you you're a are Nazi, a Nazi. Yeah. Or you Actually, don't, like, seriously, this is nonsense. I mean, at this stage of the game, uh, this thing, uh, and people are acting like little children. At uh, we can't, we, we can't promote shit like this. Okay, 
But, but an well, exactly uh, similar yeah. thing happened to the Jewish population in Germany yep. before World War II. So the Jews were prosecuted, and anybody who helped them in any way was also prosecuted. Said so the Iranian. Said the Iranian in England. <laughs> so, but, but, but what is right is right, you see, and we're seeing the same kind of uh, tactics being used. So exactly. down the line, it shouldn't be shocking if we see some kind of a war breakout as a result of this kind of, you know, uh, prejudice. Yeah. We've Other already seen it in Europe. Yeah, other than the fact that leftists here in the United States are anti-gun and you can't do a, gun, a war without guns. That's so why we want to start a gun company. <laughs> yeah, yeah universal, universal citizen armaments. Um, my next prediction is that they're going to go after your guns. They already are. Yeah, yeah but they they're already... going to try to legislate it, Andrew. That's basically they, what they, they, setting up this, in the U.S. So they, can't, they can't legislate it. The Democrats don't have the votes to do it in the House or the Senate. I think that the Democrats' time is pretty much over. And the reason why their time is over is because you can't um, run a party based on popularity and stupidity. Play and, along. Not follow, and not following through with promises, yeah. Yeah, a, a, a party that is run on popularity. But then you see, here's the problem. We did a show on geopolitics uh, about a uh, couple of weeks ago, and we were laughing. But the, the truth of the matter is, if you have a strong leader, you have a strong party. Right? That's right. Because a nonsense party of grabbing by the pussies had a strong leader. And I wouldn't call him a strong leader. Let's, let's call him strong-headed leader. Right? Yeah. right? Strong man. Strong man. <laughs> right? So you had a strong man and they were able to create havoc, right? And you have the, the Democrats with, well, less than strong man, right? And they're doing nothing. They're going to lose most of this election. They're going, to, they're going out for sure because they have um, trampled. And you see the rise of right-wing extremism happening in the u.s they've been emboldened huh? and after, uh, after... i wouldn't say they have the left-wing extremism is beginning to get a lot more serious there is a cooling off to right-wing extremism believe it or not really when because it's the, the left wing it's the left wingers doing the shit now the last multiple killings and mass mass gunnings are all lefties no that's part of Evol that's part of the Evol left actually i think I think a lot of the left wing, okay, so you have the people in the center and then you have the people on the right. And then you have the people on the left, really, really left, right? And the people on the left are really, really crazy. They all suffer from some sort of issue where they, they, they want to make the world, in their minds, they want to make the world a better place, right? Right. Right. But and the same have, thing the right the same thing the righties want to do they're just different ways of doing it yeah but the righties are trying to have already um succeeded to to a certain degree with the roe versus wade argument and these states are beginning to enact laws no right? that's been that's been going on for a while they've been testing roe v wade for 30 years now if you pay attention to american politics there was a point where there was a bombing of, of an abortion center every week in the mid 80s all, all the way to the early 90s until the fed started prosecuting the churches that were promoting the bombers they did they, they the churches hey what you went up to the churches and started taking away their 501 c3s yeah and then poof all the bombings disappeared <laughs> okay <laughs> so that, that's another prediction I'd like to initiate here, that always in times of financial difficulty and social unrest, um, extremists find uh, a viewpoint, uh, find an audience. Yeah. Yes. Right. So we wouldn't, it wouldn't be shocking to see in the near future some extremist movement gain massive popularity. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned at, at the way they're passing laws, particularly in Canada as an example. Laws are passed. <laughs> Today oh God, for yeah. tomorrow. Today yeah. for tomorrow. Like seriously, they banned handguns. Or they're doing a freeze on handguns. And that was just announced. Like, okay, whether you 
whether you're on the positive side of the argument of handguns or the negative side, the way this was done was not cool. What happens in the U.S. is none of Canada's business. So there was right. a sh- there was a shooting happening a shooting happened in the states. I think it was the Texas school shooting, right? Yes, Texas. And then Canada reacted to a Texas school shooting. You know where Texas is. You know where Canada is. So the way things are being done tends to suggest that people have agendas that are being driven here. Now, the majority of Canadians, they don't like um, gun crime. Um, Mm -hmm. Nobody likes gun crime, actually, I should say that. But by that same token, there are people who um, have a different viewpoint where that is concerned. So an analogy was made where um, a flock of sheep see a wolf eat one of the sheep. Okay, so the flock of sheep says, you know, it's the teeth that the wolf had that caused that sheep to, sheep to be um, um, ripped apart. So all the sheep take out their teeth. <laughs> so there is, uh, there is that side of the argument. I tend to be uh, more neutral where this is concerned. My main concern is the way that laws are being passed. And I think we're going to see a whole bunch more laws being passed that will restrict people in one way, shape, or form or another. They're going after people who are doing home and kitchen gardens. I've said on shows sure. before, turn your lawns into gardens. But then sure. the government will tax that shit, right? Right. See, Canada has a much easier way of passing a law today for tomorrow. In the United States, that's much harder. And there are court battles that can put injunctions on it, et cetera, et cetera. So the biggest issue when it when it comes to an understanding is like Davos had was met four weeks ago or six weeks ago, mm-hmm. and then the Bilderbergers met two weeks ago, and the day after Bilderbergers ended, Trudeau passes this anti handgun law. The day after it ended, okay, that's no coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's no coincidence. So what? What, what you're seeing is a globalist agenda that's playing out the various political parties and political concepts that are trying to become social political issues, and they're trying to blend social political issues with globalist ideas. So that the backing for the globalist idea is wound up into your social political ideas. Yeah. So while people are under pressure, they're more malleable easier to manipulate yeah, they, they want an out they want an yeah. out so you're worried about how am i paying my bills you're not paying too much attention to what laws are right. being passed and once these laws are in place they're going to be in place for decades to come right so or you give up you give up your guns to get a stable economy yeah yeah so it's it's very ingenious so to speak but mm-hmm. very very evil they have discovered a formula that works they have discovered a formula that works on a, on a majority of the population. But mm-hmm. what concerns me more than anything else is because of the drop in um, disposable income for many people. People want to, tr- there are people who want to try to grow things themselves or become um, self sufficient. Mm-hmm. And when it is that you are deliberately strangulating, people's ability to become self-sufficient. And you know what I'm talking about, Andrew. No, yeah. Right, when you're which, deliberately which, strangulating these things, it's not cool. This leads into the next prediction. Tell Deliberate me. strangulation from a stock market that is just a giant casino out of control with no financial oversight. The stock market never really had financial oversight. I, I, honestly, I honestly feel I honestly feel in the last, let's say, five to 10 years, the stock market has been weaponized like you cannot believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not even Absolutely. a real anymore. That's not even a real thing anymore. There is right. no chance. But that the is stock- also true for any currency. How many currencies exist that are actually backed by something tangible? Nothing, nothing. So, Nothing. so, so, so this, this problem has been very meticulously engineered decades in advance. I mean, since the 1960s, for example, with the dollar being backed on nothing, and many other currencies also the same. So well, 19, been, 1913 creation of the Fed and the starting of the fiat currency. There we go. 
So we've been set up, now is the unfolding of the mouse trap, and we've been uh, eating the cheese happily, not noticing, okay, we're already done for. Uh, the plan is in motion now, it's just uh, becoming more visible. Okay. I, I actually, I actually want to spend some time talking about the fluctuations in the last couple of years, and I'll tell you why. Because there's always a premise for this fluctuation. I will tell you something else, right? When Donald Trump was in office, the tweets that made the stock market do this, mm -hmm. right? Like, honestly, I don't think he's bright enough to engineer that instability. No, that was the algorithms having to figure out how to react and they're not programmed for it. <laughs> right, it's like, but that was one of the more genuine times that I've seen the stock market react because it wasn't planned. I could see I, I could see a cause and effect scenario between what is happening, the pretext that they're using, which is not good pretext for those of you who read deeply. Okay. Right. Russia has a war in Ukraine. Do you think that would explain the entire domino effect of everything that is happening? It does not. Do your research. As soon as Russia back their oil in gold and back the rubles pegged to gold. Every sanction the West put on Russia failed miserably and now is boomeranging back on them. Until they lift these Russian sanctions, it's self-imposed tyranny to your own self. But it's affecting the population of Europe and North America most severely. And again, I believe Yes, that because China, China and India buddied up to Russia. Exactly right. So I, I exactly wanted to reach to this point. Now, um, North America and Europe are joining the third world country club. But what, what about the rest <laughs> of the population of the earth? So 80% uh, of the population of the earth live in Asia and Africa. Mm, and we right. see now something interesting happening, for example, with China, India, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, the old Silk Road is being reestablished. Correct. That's right. This is a, a movement against the globalist agenda. And uh, with the example of Russia backing its, its currency to gold or real commodities, they've discovered they can be, isolate themselves, insulate themselves from this, um, this stupid uh, shit right. show that's being uh, run America, by the globalists. America, the problem with Russia has always been that to a certain extent that country can sustain itself if it needs to and that has always been the problem of imposing sanctions on russia now the breadbasket of a lot of these countries that we talk about was ukraine from the time russia went into ukraine shit was going to go sideways for the rest of the world and everybody knows that putin does not need to win that war he just needs to disrupt supply and demand long enough to put a hurting on the rest of the world and people don't get that right so they're like oh i see things on, on social media and so on oh we stand with ukraine and give them hell ukraine this is not about winning or losing y'all have already lost y'all have already lost yeah, the day they pegged gold to rubles for gas you yeah. lo the west lost Exactly. It was, no it matter was, how, no matter how much they manipulate gold to go up or down, Russia wins either way. And I don't believe it's the Russians' intentions to starve, for example, countries in the Middle East and Africa. No, no it's not. And, and, and they're not going to do it. So that's another they, prediction. They, they, they want to break U.S. hegemony. Yeah. Right. It's also a way to wipe the nose and the shit they've created. It's like a dog who shit in the corner and you wipe their nose in it. This is a way for Russia to do that to the entire West. And unfortunately, the people that you have in power in the U.S. do not have the smarts to react properly to this because there's not. They don't have no. They don't have the authority because the people that own them will never give them the authority to act smart. There are plenty of smart people in the United States that are talking up a storm, but nobody's listening to them. Because they're not, they're not, they're not, they don't have no authority to make any changes. Example, our Fed right now has been pumping trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in to who? The corporate bigwigs. And yet they want to do build back better and give two trillion to the people, even though they just gave 30 trillion to the banks that never are going to pay it back. And they want the American people to pay back the two trillion. Okay. 
this is why I'm saying the stock market next is the next prediction thing that I want to stick to. Melt up, melt down, melt up, melt down. And the whole point of that is to try to reevaluate it from its high 30,000 range to its mid 20,000 range so they can start this shit all over again. Yeah. So essentially, they're robbing the richest populace on earth, which is the Western world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rest of the globe are not affluent. Uh, there's not that extreme poverty that we used to see in the world 50 years ago. That's gone thanks to technology. But still, we're talking about disposable income. That only mm -hmm. exists mm -hmm. in the Western world. Correct. So again, this whole thing is to call that 15% of global population that owns 90% of the wealth. And that's how it's been so far. Right. Now they're going for the first world. And my next prediction is famine in Africa. No it's one wants to hear that, but it's famine will always hit Africa first whenever there's a food shortage. And the 2011 Arab Spring, what did that stem from? They quadrupled the olive oil prices overnight. Unfortunately, Andrew, you're, you're most probably right. But then I think out of this, this hardship, there's going to come, I think this would be the beginning of an African awakening. So the entire po uh, population of Africa is only one and a half billion with all the resources they have. That's crazy. So they've no been suppressed. Uh, unfortunately, no matter what, any African uprising will be taken over by the Chinese internal services or the CIA. And nobody will take power there that isn't already pre-owned by another government. The, That's the unfortunate truth about Africa. The saddest thing about Africa that I find is that you have a landmass that has pretty much every resource Everything. that you possibly um, imagine. Africa has never read, well, I wouldn't say never, but for the most part, they've never been um, a sovereign continent. That's right. Somebody's always running Africa. Okay. That's right. And so places like Rhodesia, which has the best mineral deposits ever, diamonds, everything that you could possibly, that Rhodesia, if in a fair system, Rhodesia would be the richest place on earth. That's right. Okay. And so in Tanzania too. And so what it is that, um, I, I don't know, you see, the thing is, Africa has an African Union, which is just a puppet um, um, convention. It's just a puppet convention. And so they will never wi wise up. We have um, a friend in Africa, don't we, who is trying to encourage um, Africans to um, pay attention to their resources and become better businessmen. And he is being stopped by the same academic institution that is support. I wish he was there right now. Yeah. Right. He, he is being stopped by the same academic institution which he teaches at, right? Mm -hmm. To put his belief system and stuff out there. So I think that because, and you're right, Andrew, because any, um, disturbance in the world will hit Africa, first of all. And then it will balloon out to um, other third world countries. Next prediction. When famine in Africa hits, the Christian coalitions will come out of their slumber and begin to demand Christian payments to Africa. And none of the money will reach Africa again. We've seen the Christians fade and fade, especially at their monies that was going and going. And that money that has been saved is going to be squeezed out of the Christian population to go to Africa. And none of it will become to go to actual Africans on the ground. All right. My, my prediction off of that prediction is that you will see a mass exodus of Christians from church. Right. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You can only rely on faith to a certain level of guilt and faith and stuff before when shit starts to get real and I can't eat and then you got a problem. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be the Christian whistleblowers uh, proving that the money doesn't go there and that you have profit Christian faith profiteers. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The scams and charities, and, and they've, they've existed forever. But yeah. now there's going to be motivation for them to come to light. You, you know these prosperity preachers are still preaching prosperity in this day and age. Like, that right. shit is criminal. Oh, my God. Right? Yeah. Prosperity pre preachers. I, I, I've seen them um, still asking for jets and stuff like that. Yeah, Cree Flow has two $20 million jets. Cree is the, the pastor's Cree Flow dollar. Look them up. That's just uh, disgraceful, really. The followers should look at this and say, okay, no, no man of God or spirituality would amass that, that much money. Nah, they, they don't look at it that way. They, they look at it as he did this and he's a man of God and that's what God has done for him. So, and uh, you have to add one more thing. <laughs> Okay, what? they are they are laundering drug money also. Okay, for anyone to think they're getting that much money out of low paying people, a dollar here, a dollar there, two hundred here. Uh -uh. Yes, they are robbing people, but the majority of the big dollars is one hundred percent money laundering for drugs and prostitution. So I got a joke for you guys while we're on the subject. The head of the B British Virgin Islands, the premier, got himself arrested. They're looking to charge him with drug smuggling. That is not a joke. You guys can go and research this. But here's the joke that um, I actually have for you. Now, this guy had meetings with a cartel member. And they're making the deals to pass the drugs and have it sit in the harbor at the, in the British Virgin Islands and have it transferred to the US, Amir, to seal the deal. The deal, you know, the illicit deal? Yeah. They prayed over the deal. I could not make that shit up. It's in the tapes, right? So they prayed over the deal. So I'm like, can you imagine a man about to break into your house and he's praying that the burglary will go well? <laughs> I don't <laughs> understand. We Is are that in a warped system, this world has gone crazy. Is it any different than a football player praying for his uh, next touchdown? No, it isn't. A, I, I'll tell you what the difference is, though. My man, you know, like, seriously, you're the head of a country. You are the head of a country. And this is happening all over the third world. Eh? They have discovered the, the, um, the corruption that runs in the third world. So you had cartel running all of the leaders and politicians in all of those nations, right? They were running the all church, of them. The church approves of the cartel members. Yeah, because they're, they're Catholic. Yes, they approve of them. They give them sainthood. You could buy sainthood now, by the way. That's but, what I'm saying. They give them sainthood. Which again, there's the issue of drugs existing in the world, and these are produced um, and transported and distributed. Uh, this is this is not something that can be done by even a large scale organization. Entire governments are involved in this. That's right. So, so it's something that's um, probably not going to go away. So we're going to have an increase in addiction. Because in times of pressure, people want to escape. That's why fentanyl has flooded them, flooded the market worldwide. Because it's cheap to produce too. So yeah. essentially, we, we, we would probably agree that it's not about resources. The corporations that are pulling the strings are not short of funds. They already have all the money in the world. So what it really is, is forcing people into compliance. So yeah. it's all about domination and control again at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You get squeezed, you get stressed, you become hopeless, you give away freedoms in the name of some temporary relief or some promise of relief in the future. America, it's the foot on the rat, it's the foot on the rat okay. scenario, right? Listen, it's the foot on the rat scenario. You put your foot on the rat, and by the way, in case you guys are wondering, you're watching this. Um, broadcast you would be the rat in this analogy right and so you put the foot on the rat the fat the, the, the rat goes nowhere does nothing you do whatever you want to that rat okay. i think the next I, prediction that i would have to make on that front is that 
there will be some kind of awakening but what is awakening without the ability to do action you gotta when you when you're making these kinds of big moves on people you gotta enact laws to keep them subservient and so laws like if you resist we can freeze your bank account is in effect everywhere huh? mm -hmm. and i thought canada was the only place that did that but i apparently i'm wrong you could do that in australia as well so i didn't know that you, you know, gentlemen, this reminds me of what happened to the Soviet U Union during the times of Stalin. Correct. So you can be all enlightened and fine and dandy, but what the state assigns to you is a job in a factory. That's right. you, don't own, you don't own your home, you don't own anything, and if you speak a little too much, you end up in the gulag. The so, Canadian politician who just said on national television, that you don't have a right to own land in canada you i said that clip to you yeah i know well that's part of the globalist agenda which is my leads to my next prediction now this one is a very big one and i want you all to pay attention to it when biden loses i'm sorry the midterm election the democrats lose roughly by 10 points and anybody that knows elections 10 points is gigantic and it could reach as much as 15 points in certain areas. Biden will attempt to save his presidency because Clint, Hillary Clinton has already said she's not going to run, and there and Biden wants to run again. It's just a matter of are they going to keep keep what what's her laughing face or not. He's going to run again, and what he's going to do because the war in, in Ukraine didn't work for him. He's going to turn to the Mexico and cartels, and because he's just deployed the United States Navy to begin intercepting cocaine shipments coming out of colombia and venezuela where they're using these semi-submersible boats that are being produced in the middle of jungles in the nowhere by the thousands so the entire pacific side and gulf side is going to have naval fleets deployed there for drug interdiction processes which is going to force all the drugs to go the land route up Mexico, and then the border is going to get shut. He's going to deal with the border. And he's going to after go after the Mexican government, and he's going to go after all the other the Panamanian. Sorry, the um, all the other banana republics that are there, and he's going to struggle strangle the hold. So it has to revert to shipping. And once the cocaine has to revert, there's no land hold, it's shipping hold, it'll become a high seas warfare once again, in which the cartels will submit to America. Because right now they're not submitting to America. Um, and this I've, is what will Biden thinks he's going to save his presidency, because he's going to flood billions of dollars into the local police departments to fight the cartels. I've always found it hilarious when you enact a war on drug, right? You see, right. Has, the, has, the, has the problem with that, right? What are you spending money on? People are turning to drugs because they are, um, they're in a hopeless situation. If you gave everybody food, healthcare, et cetera, do you think people would be more amenable to taking drugs? Let's see now, let me think about that. So I always found it extremely um, funny when it is that people um, say we're having this war on drugs right because at the end of the day if there is a supply and there is a demand commerce will happen doesn't matter what the product is right and so to your prediction i'm going to say the following i'm going to say the following they tried the war on drugs already it was disastrous it's not going to save shit okay if anything is that's going to make him look more weak than before oh no 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 the war on drugs was very successful until 30 years later when the prisons had were so full it crippled the entire prison system which is a failure in and of itself because but it took 30 years for the failure to be even understood who started that wasn't it a, 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 a Nin Bush war, Con drug control act 1970. okay and who then a re-edition re and then in 1987, which would be Reagan, uh, passed a bit where he added, they changed the, they changed the rules where instead of a, the minute, minimum sentences were increased by like tremendous amounts of years. So if I may, I'd like to make the next prediction, and this is going to be a rather dark one, a drastic increase in the number of people incarcerated. Yes. 
part of the war on drugs. They're going to go after MS-13. They're going to use RICO Act. They're going to take down all the big who money launderers. And it's going to Thus, become a lot easier. Why to you're it. seeing crypto kill itself right now, because they can't use it to launder money anymore. They know what's coming. And with the increase in number of prisoners, it's going to be easy to get rid of intellectuals or free speakers. Again, going back to the rule book of Stalin. So we've seen the rule book of uh, Hitler. We've seen the rule book of Stalin. Uh, what's left? Probably the rule book of Mao, who caused millions of deaths also. All right. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is just cherry picking the very worst of our recent 200 year history. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's looking awful. Who are these psychopaths? Uh, this is rather dreadful. The top, the top one percenters. It's yeah. not, in the long, in the long term, my prediction is it's not going to work out well for them, because that's the problem with the foot on the rat. You expend a lot of energy to keep your foot on that rat until it's dead. Then you don't have to expend any energy, and if you put enough weight, it dies right away. Yeah. Which is the whole point is to win the next election and keep the globalists in power. Mm. But then looking Every at the glo global picture, there is strict resistance from um, mainly Asia and Russia uh, trying to sort of form their own separate system. Mm -hmm. So there's they already no did. They already did create a an alternate to the SWIFT system. Yes, that's correct. Absolutely true. And again, when you think about, for example, the, the, the global currency, which is the US dollar, is backed on a bluff. A massive shock to the system has the potential to bring the whole thing crumbling down. Sure, so but that's always that's all that's always been true because it's it's the petrodollar. And now and looking at the Saudis, for example, uh, they're not happy to play along anymore. They were the major anchor because so many of their so many of their fields are near empty. They know that if they produce the stable amount, it'll go 12 to 18 years. If they produce more, it goes down to seven or eight years. And they have not gotten enough active refineries and active wells in other places in the world that are still giving them the windfall profits that they want. Which will, in my prediction, my next prediction, start another one of those energy debates inside the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, with the whole fracking thing and so on. They're looking for alternative energies. Now, what has been happening um, around the world is that people are looking at alternative energies in terms of electric vehicles and so on. And I want to say something here. Part of that is absolutely uh, genuine, a genuine um, attempt to create um, alternative energies. And a lot of that is a farce, right? Because the truth of the matter is greed knows no conscience greed knows no conscience so um i believe um what's his name uh musk wants to make his um tesla vehicle a standard right so he's trying to actively get the prices dropped or so he says but his life has been made very interesting right and so tesla vehicles are not going to come down anytime soon guys it's not these alternative means of energy, they have been artificially um, inflated for many, many years. So I did study power engineering for a while. Mm -hmm. Renewable resources are at best able to provide 15% of the global energy requirements. Mm -hmm. So they're not quite there yet. There have been many brilliant ideas, but when we look at the scale of what the energy demand of the world is, they're not going to be ready for another few decades. Mm -hmm. Then looking at uh, things like electric vehicles. Okay, if, if the energy is produced centrally, like in a power plant, mm -hmm. it will improve efficiency, but that's probably a 30 to 40% margin. We're still 60% short. So that energy that you use to charge your electric vehicle still has to come from traditional methods. So the, the infrastructure isn't laid out correctly for this kind of a thing. Right. Internal, internal combustion engines should have gone a long time ago and replaced by pneumatic engines that use tidal power under hydraulics to create mass compressed air systems spread throughout the whole world. 
And therefore you have compressed air stations that fill up your car and you could even have a small little micro diesel generator on it for production of electrical power. Okay, and still have vehicles the same size and shape as they are today, they just no longer use internal combustion. There's also an aspect of vanity that goes into this kind of stuff. Now, before um, Musk entered the game, the average um, small-minded person says, oh, but it won't run as fast as a gas-powered vehicle. That was the concern, for real. For mm -hmm. real, that was a concern. Now, I honestly think in terms of the energy argument, in places like, let's say, the Caribbean and so on, I, these are poor countries and so on, right? But the sunlight was a good idea, okay? Okay. Sunlight was a good idea. The population is not so intense. So not even a pilot project was started out there. Not even a pilot project. And so sure. I think um, the whole energy debate is about masks and mirrors, okay? And as with everything else, it's, it's been highly polit politicized. And I think um, over the next year or so, you're going to start seeing this, um, this argument and they're going to use it as virtue signaling as usual right like if you're not with the green you're not with the team or some nonsense like that some catchy phrase like that but i do have another prediction which um is a little bit part of this economic discussion social unrest of all kinds now we've seen the crazy happen many many times expect a ramping up of the crazies so far how many mass shootings have they been in the u.s like 45 we're at, we're at them kind of figures. We're but at half, these figures. Half, half of them are drug killings because COVID shut down the corner street dealers and the cocaine and crack dealers inside all the nightclubs across the country. So this is a taking back of territory. And um, this will continue. But there's another kind of crazy that is um, rearing its head. <laughs> People are, are, are losing their minds. People are becoming a little bit more crazy. For those of you who are watching the show, I expect that shit to continue because no. now we have people pushing people in front of trains and subway trains and so on. Like what happened in, in Canada? Like what, what is the point of that, right? You ask yourself that question because when you crush people enough, they lose their minds. And then you have the drug crisis making it worse. And uh, I'd like to make another prediction. There's going to be an increased frequency in power cuts. Now, if by any chance these, these power cuts go on for a number of hours, imagine what will happen to a metropolitan city with no power. It's going to be a jungle. So, so for the last three months, so Amir, to justify your point, for the last three months here, every mainstream media channel has said, America must prepare for rolling blackouts all summer long. World countrywide, rolling blackouts countrywide. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it means no television. It, the means, no, uh, it, it means no television, and it means you can't charge your cell phone eventually. Mm -hmm. Unless you get a rocket fuel stove that has a USB charger plug in it that takes heat and converts it to electricity. Burn little local twigs and charge your phone. And so yes, those devices yeah. are out there, yeah. So that would be, again, going back full circle to what we started with, tangible mm -hmm. commodities, because the money is right. going to go poof. But if you have a device that can generate power locally in a clean, efficient way, you'd be surprised how easy it is to live off the grid with a right. little generator. That's so right. you should be thinking in those terms, because the grid is going to be gone. A lot of support structures existing through the government, through the system, is going to be severely compromised. The big cities, to, the big cities will be fine. It's the many little cities spread throughout the United States. One of the biggest things that Europe and the rest of Asia doesn't realize is how big the United States is and how many giant cities versus micro cities there are. It's the micro cities that will fail, which is the majority of Republicans. Okay. Yes, you'll have a few cities, big cities here and there. We're a third of the cities without power, but the rest of the rural areas stay without power for much longer periods of time. Because the infrastructures in the rural areas have not been upgraded. And the, the problem with prediction of energy consumption 
This has existed for decades. That's right. the, the truth of the matter is that the, the grid, let's just call it the global grid, is operating at maybe 1% plus minus tolerance. So it's, right. not, it's not able to tolerate any kind of major shock. Yeah. So if, That's they why really wanted to, if they really that, wanted to solve it, they should have been making thousands of nuclear plants because that's the only valid alternative and they don't yeah. exist. Well, there are, the, no, there's fusion that could be made, but they're not going to invest in them. And the reason there's no nuclear power plants is because of the, the bills that were passed to create. The, there has not been, been a new, brand new nuclear power plant in the United States since 1996, I believe. No new ones have been created. And now they're saying, build nuclear plants. Even if you were to have the approval today to build new plants, it would take eight to nine years to design and implement and get the first guy on the ground with the first shovel. And another three to four years to build it and another three years to test it before it goes live. So you're talking nearly a 16 year delay from the moment the laws changed till you get the first volt of power out of it. So the sad reality is even if they start today, by the time you can flip the switch on the first plant, Saudi oil has run out. No, but the other thing is the military ships, like the aircraft carriers that use micro nuclear power plants, that technology can be implemented worldwide with a minimal of, of uh, waste that's done because those have the most advanced electro, uh, 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 nuclear generation power techniques to them. That can be, they would have to take that technology out of the military and put it direct into the, direct into the, and, into the and corporations, right. And there's already thousands of nuclear weapons, so the, the high grade uranium needed is already there. So that could Correct. solve the problem. But well, the, the, the thing is, theoretically, the, right, theoretically. Right, <laughs> right, right now, America has, I believe, including submarines, 180 or 185 nuclear powered vessels. If they just took those engines out of those nuclear powered vessels, you could solve one third of the entire power issue for the United States. And one third. Of proliferation of weapons, there should be a proliferation of this kind of clean nuclear technology. Well, Advanced the thing is, the thing is, there's no such thing as clean nuclear. Correct. Right Correct. now, the existing nuclear power plants are producing more waste than we can store. Okay, and okay. until they figure out a way to to neutralize the waste or do it like shoot it into the sun or something, the the, the volume of waste that you're producing will still outweigh the 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 benefits it gives you within thirty years. But Andrew, they've solved it. They didn't shoot it into the sun. They shot it at Iraqis. <laughs> yes, depleted uranium, but that's a different process. The actual nuclear waste materials that are coming That's off. Funny. That, that right. was funny. Uh, yeah. That yeah. was very funny. Yeah, the nuclear waste that they're doing, they're just sticking it in Yucca Mountain, which is under a mountain, and praying it doesn't leak. Talking about kicking the can down the road. This is the worst example. Kicking the can right. underneath the mountain, sweeping it under the mountain, not yeah. sweeping it underneath the rug. Honestly. This is why I said world power can be solved by tidal generation. Okay, the, the tech, existing technology exists. None of the big corporations invest into it. Why? Because they ultimately understand it's the, it's the end of the internal combustion engine because hydraulic systems can store what? Energy in many different forms. Okay. So it's not like we're helpless as a civilization. Right, a you're not. We're not. They're just not it's investing the into thing. them. It, it, it's, yeah. the, it, it's the same thing, greed does not have a conscience which right. is what i said before but i want to take a little bit of a, a strip of uh, the banking systems because they are making some very interesting moves that are going underneath the radar now a lot of y'all would have probably been going through the airport and seeing a bunch of banks literally giving away credit cards you're you're trying to board a flight say stop we're offering you this credit card and so on. Don't take it. <laughs> Don't take it. Because what the banks are doing is developing a contingency plan for imminent failure. 
because you see what is going on in the world is affecting them too okay what is going on in russia and ukraine is affecting them too and so they have a contingency plan and the contingency plan starts with you and getting you in debt and that's it's how they're going to make themselves liquid it's one of the oldest forms of slavery it is uh, slavery through debt Debt. You owe the, the debtor so much you will never earn your freedom. So going debt, back to ancient debt and servitude. And this debt is and servitude. this is what's disgusting about it because they're in every airport, right? Not that I'm going to mention any banks by name, but you guys would be in the bank and you seeing the airport or whatever else. Uh, you're about to catch a flight. What I really don't like about um, corporate um, entities is the insidious way the, that they sit down plot and operate psychologically speaking you're about to board a flight a flight you know that hard times are coming you're thinking an additional credit card would be a wonderful thing for me okay and they're telling they, uh, this is because i was approached by such uh, uh, such a person in, in the airport says well it's almost guaranteed and we're waiving the first yes fees and stuff like that and i'm like no nah, it's cool if it sounds too good to be true it probably is so especially if it's coming are, from a bank especially if it's coming from a bank and so the banks are building in their contingency plans all of a sudden the banks are being nice to you and they're going to be doing that and so i'm warning the people watching this broadcast that the banks have a danger that a real and present danger and when you're dealing with a bank a bank definitely does not have any conscience the purpose of a bank is greed Okay, let's just get this plain and straight. Out of any other industry, the banking sector exists specifically to promulgate greed. <laughs> That's what it does. And so the contingency plan is you guys. When a bank is being nice to you, you need to be careful. They say, oh, you can get this loan for this house. You can get this loan for this. You can... And you're like, hard times are coming. I better have that stuff. All of you guys that are watching this broadcast, I know that um, um, banks in the US are doing it. I know banks in Canada are doing it, but I know that they're giving away credit cards in the, in the third world. They're giving them away, Amir, mm -hmm. right? Talk about, this is a different way of putting your foot on the rat. It's a debt and that is going to be happening. These financial instruments that they're hand, handing out, they're coming with strings attached and they're coming with strings attached, not now, but in the future. I mean, exactly. This is the mechanism that has resulted in so many people losing their homes. Correct. So you get a 30-year mortgage, you pay 27 years, you miss three months, they throw you out. That's insane. What kind of a fucked up a contract is that? So a, 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 a prediction. If you are in debt, you're in deep trouble. You're in deep doo-doo. Try to fix that first before you buy anything. Actually... If you're going to buy something, as the mayor suggested, I would highly suggest um, some form of tangible commodity that actually promotes your survival. I, this is not the time to be to be, to be buying that pair of shoes that Kim Kardashian has. Mm -hmm. For real, for realsies. Okay, time, don't do that. Time to buy a, a quality bread maker, make your bread at home instead of spending it at the store or learning to brew your own beer at home, all things that are craft artists and things that one can learn and have fun doing. Okay. And if you live in the country, make sure you have the ability to hunt. Because trust me, running after bunny rabbits is a difficult task. Our ancestors did it, but we're not quite acquainted to that kind of yes. hardship. That's why they invented the sling, the bow and arrow, and the atalatl, okay? All those other things, okay? Believe it or not, you can go out on Amazon and get a the next generation of slingshot. It's not your little wooden thing with the rubbers on it. It's got three super things and a bendy spring inside it, and it can shoot almost as fast as a twenty-two, a bullet. Okay, exactly. It's not like that anymore. It's next level. Okay, I mean that's a big band on there, so that band's probably like a two hundred pound pull. You know, I got a two hundred pound. Feet, you know, feet per I'm second. gonna ask a question, Amel. What are you doing with that in the UK? Like, do your neighbors know you have it? Well, that's just in case the 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 jam sandwiches, which are police cars over there, 
<laughs> Get too rowdy. Muted. You're muted, Amir. Excuse me, you can't use an air rifle? You can't use any kind of firearm? Nope. But God knows you can't go out with a spear in your hand, so this is all you're left with. That's right. <laughs> The UK is kind of strict. So yeah, the, the gun loads are pretty, you can't have anything really. Anything right. larger than your pinky that cuts, it'll end, end you up in jail. So yeah, the UK is, uh, they've gone all the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly um, believe that if you are living and you are out there, like honestly, Andrew, you and I have had a, this discussion before. If you can learn firearms, then do that thing. Try. I highly recommend it. Bow and arrow. Okay. Will require a little bit more skill. Yeah. I will tell you this right now, because it looks easy on TV, but it ain't. Okay. Crossbow. There's all sorts of things that you could look you could look at there, and and th these aren't for tools of war. No, these are survival, survival systems. systems. Yeah, correct. Okay, because a bow and arrow, can, you can easily bow fish. Okay, use a bow with a string attached to it to shoot a fish in the water. Okay, that, that that's been around for thousands of years. Okay. So when things get really messed up, hopefully right. they won't get quite that bad. But if they do, you have the ability to eat. That's right. Mm. I watched a I watched a podcast recently because um, on a lady who was try uh, what she does is she tries to get people to do kitchen gardens and home gardens, and um, things have been made increasingly difficult for these people. We've said on many broadcasts turn your lawns into gardens, right? Um, but apparently you can't. <laughs> yeah. You can't legally. You can't right, and so. Honestly speaking, I, I think that um, you can expect to see people either legislating or making it more difficult for you to sustain yourselves. That has already been happening, um, but it's becoming more and more of a problem, okay? So the um, pretext is that we have supply chains, so you can't get seeds, you can't get stuff like that. Okay. Now, I live in a province where you theoretically should be able to get seeds and stuff. So if there's a shortage in the province in, that I live in, I could just imagine what bigger cities are experiencing. Okay. Right. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say where that is concerned. What I see happening is that when their foot is firmly on the rat, you're going to have a lot more social upheaval. Tribalism is going to increase. That is for damn sure. People will look after their own first, and then they will look after everybody else, probably second. Okay, but people tend to click in these kinds of um, situations, and mm -hmm. that creates some social unrest. And so I don't, I don't see this stuff going on going away anytime soon. You can control the people, but they're gonna fight amongst themselves. Yeah, that's right. So I have one I have one final prediction, and this is an out of right field prediction that you're going to see a tremendous increase in police impersonators being caught all over the country. It's already bad now, but it's going to get a lot worse. I didn't know that you asked. Yes. Tell me about that, Andrew. Just go to YouTube and type in police impersonators. And the level of videos that you will see police impersonator pulls over local sheriff gets caught. Oh yeah, it happens a lot. So is this kind of like a shakedown? No, these are just crazies who oh. want to be pretend cops. It's just like those people who pretend to be military vets. Okay, because you've seen a radicalization of the police and the defund the police, you're going to see these crazies who want to come out. They they buy their own car, their own police equipment. It looks exactly like a police car. And if you want a really crazy one, look up the story of Jeremy DeWitt, D-E-W-I-T-T. -T. 
This guy's the serial police impersonator to the worst of the worst of the worst. And he's the highest level of scam artist who believes his own bullshit. And it turns out he's Can actually a, a what? You know, no, finish that. And then I will ask my question. So it actually turns out he's a sexual predator too. All right. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> he's on the sexual uh, the registry list. There is no big barrier to becoming a policeman in the yes, U.S. Yes, there is. There's Why? a huge barrier. What is the what huge. is the barrier? Any misdemeanor drug offense whatsoever, you're done. Any misdemeanor trespassing offense, you're done. Well, that's why they do don't with, become police officers. Yes. Anything at all with any form of psychological issue, you're done. Uh, a psychological issue? How many psycho police? No, we're, to, we're, no, we're just talking depression pills when you were 12. Done. Yeah. That's hilarious. Right. Because I was uh, the question I was going to ask is, uh if you want to talk about being a military vet become a military vet if you want to talk about becoming a policeman just become that shit stolen valor is a huge thing here david look it up stolen valor recently a woman was caught who said she was in iraq and suffered from war injuries and ended up being on the national veterans board but uh got brought in under obama was given national awards and then was given a very high position in supporting veterans and it turns out she was never even in the military no but seriously faked faked the entire thing including the injury no but seriously yes or why why david it's an epidemic here it's an epidemic because promoting the military for so long these people want to be a part of it but never can this is why i'm saying we're going to see a very dramatic increase in police impersonators and probably with that we could also predict uh cutting of the funds of the genuine police forces across well, the no, th that, that, that they're going to refund the police because they can cities are falling apart here that that's not an issue the issue is going to be a police impersonator pulling over children and beginning to shake them down for sexual favors or become the drug the next form of drug traders mm -hmm. because it's a power trip so i was telling you about the serial personator named jeremy dewitt i highly advise anyone who who's not seen this to look at the jeremy dewitt story now there's thousands of videos about this guy thousands of videos about this guy just start with the shorter ones and listen to the way this guy talks to police and you'll be like this guy's real he's real he's real he has 17 pending accounts for for, for impersonating an officer okay 17. and since we're on the youtube thing i want to make a prediction an absolute explosion of karenism well, you were already seeing that, but it'll quadruple its Karenism, yes. <laughs> right, right. Yes. and an absolute explosion of Karenism because um, because the satisfaction is on the right. And if Karen can go to the manicurist, yo, she's going to speak to somebody's manager. That's right. And if none <laughs> of you, if, if any of you out there have not spent a few hours watching Karen gets own videos or Karen gets arrested, Karen gets tased, I highly advise you once a month to watch at least two consecutive hours of karen getting own videos it will just enlighten you the other day i passed this wisdom on to david and it yeah. took a while for it to permeate but he suddenly took it and it changed the david <laughs> i went down a rapid hole in youtube of crazy shit. okay <laughs> like crazy shit, like karen trying to arrest the police officer like yeah. like seriously asking uh, like trying to arrest the police officer i went down uh, uh this little rabbit hole on youtube and i'm like where do these people crawl out from is that for real yeah. but it is real and i suggest i highly suggest it go down that rabbit hole with me see yeah. it, it, and understand that people are genuinely prime grade high grade crazy out there yep. 
So David, remember the the Karen that says, "I break arms and I haven't taken my Cymbalta today." I saw a video recently. Okay, a woman called the police because she tried to buy crystal meth, a rock, and the person took her money. Wait, wait for it, and didn't give her the product. So she was telling this to the police officer. Yep. Could not make that shit up. Nope. Police officer goes to the person who she was supposed to be buying it from. Person who she's supposed to be buying it from says, um, "That's not me. I don't. I, 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 I don't sell drugs. I'm a prostitute." <laughs> what is going on in the U.S.? <laughs> like, what? What is going? You're talking to a cop. Well, I tried to buy some drugs and I didn't get my products and they still have my money. Like, but seriously, you don't call the cops for that. No. But, but shit like that happens all the time, David. All the time. So but, um, Karen, Karen getting tased videos are, are my current new flavor. Watching the Karen's Karen's get tased. <laughs> oh my god. At uh, least I, I, I have to admit. Tased. I have to admit, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. It is a guilty pleasure, and I, I and I like honestly, I actually sit here with shame in my face and in my heart to admit that I spent hours because this evil man sent me down this rabbit hole, and I'm w watching, <laughs> and I'm watching like carrying video after carrying video, right? I'm watching carrying. I'm, I'm already hooked. Out. I think I'm. I think I'm Andrew's no, next Mary, victim. You, you gotta check this shit out. It's like some crazy stuff. People are full on crazy in the U.S., huh? Right? And I'm like, I, I expect this trend to continue because um, I, I don't know. Honestly, it might be in the water. You never know. But I, I, I just feel that um, something is going on. I don't know where this epidemic started over this crazy stuff. It, it was it always like this, Andrew. No, around 2014 is when it really rose its head out of the abyss of Karen. Wow. So Karen videos, huh? Andrew giveth and Andrew taketh away. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember telling David about this a while ago, how much enjoyment I was getting out of him. And I, I, never, took him, I, I never took it up, I took him up on it. I'm like, you know what? Let me see what this man is watching. I'm like, I, I went, I started... And I couldn't stop, yo, because YouTube um, gives you the um, recommendation. Yeah, like 14 hours later, David's laying on the side of his floor, can barely breathe because he's laughed for 14 straight hours. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's beautiful. You know, out of all the craziness, at least we get some laughter. That's medicine. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, guys, that's it for our show today. Um, we are going to be having a call-in show. Um, we're probably going to be having you guys come into the Zoom room and interact with us. Uh, we've been doing a few shows now, and um, if you guys are interested, we're going to be posting the links. And in a few weeks, or a couple of weeks, I should say, uh, come and talk to us for a little bit, okay? And before you do that, please watch Karen videos, because <laughs> I can't, I, listen, can't make this shit up. Guys, Karen that's what is your... Start with Karen's get tased. <laughs> All right, guys, last word is yours. Anybody has anything to say? Last predictions, anything? Last Karen, prediction. Karen uh, <laughs> uh, uh, beyond Karen's get tased. Everybody that's out there, get your money out of the stock market. Yeah, agree. Okay? Get your money out of the stock market. And, I, and do I have advice where to put it? No. It's all that uncertain. You, I mean, if you've got hundreds of thousands in the stock market, you're really not going to be able to divest fast enough for the craziness to happen. Even Disney's down on under a hundred dollars a share. Netflix might actually go bankrupt and be sold off. No one ever thought that would happen, but yeah. that's a real possibility that Netflix could go bankrupt. Pay attention to your money. Like, like Amir was saying, buy the things that can keep you self-sufficient. You know, can you buy property now? No, you can't. The prices are too ridiculously high right now. Okay? And the same thing with the flipping of houses. That's such a difficult industry to get into and do right into it. So you really got, don't buy coins. Don't buy gold coins. Don't buy silver coins. 
get 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 out of those those niche markets that only are there during the good times and fail during the bad times. That's it. Go ahead, Amir. Oh, I, I can't top that. Um, I'm going to go have a look at some Karens getting tased. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd yeah. recommend everybody to do so. Get some good, healthy belly laughs. It's good for your health. I, absolutely. I, I will second that. Because, um, yeah, the Karen getting tased video, that, this, this addiction, addiction, guilty <laughs> pleasure and addiction. Guys, I will take you away. See you guys real soon. Bye-bye. Later, later, everyone.